Thank you, uh, Ken Corla. Minister, can I first say that I will support both of your amendments to the Constitution, with reservations, but I think sometimes you have to look at the bigger mm. picture, the greater good. Now, all my political life, I have campaigned for adequate support for family carers and all that that entails. Family carers, I've always said, along with volunteers, are the glue that holds our society together. They allow our societies, as we have constructed them, to function. But, Minister, that should never, ever, ever be taken for granted. Now, I want to recognise the contribution of many organisations uh, to this debate. Um, but from my own perspective, I especially want to mention Family Carers Ireland, who are represented in the gallery here today, and to recognise their huge contribution to the debate and their support for family carers. Now, while your amendment is not as strong as I would have hoped for, indeed, it's, it's weak-ish, uh, but it is still a recognition within the Constitution that you shall strive to support the provision of care. Now, I believe it's, it's not strong enough, but Minister, it's not nothing. And that's important. I think we need to be very careful in the arguments we make in this House here today, because we could well put a lot of people off from voting yes for these amendments. Because people need a reason to vote. They're busy, they're getting on with their lives, they have lots of things to do. So, you know, they need a reason. They need to feel that their vote will matter, that it will accomplish something. And we need to be very careful. We've used this phrase before, but I think we need to use it here, that we cannot make the perfect the enemy of the good. I think what you have here is far from perfect, but I would consider it good in that context. Now, if we say in this House, this amendment carries no weight for care for carers, this amendment means nothing, then a lot of people watching and listening today will say to themselves, well, if it means that little, if it means nothing, why should I vote for it? If there is something, if there's nothing positive in this, what's the point in voting for, for it? Or even, what's the point in voting? So we need to be careful what we want to achieve here. If other people were in government, we'd have different amendments. They are not. You are in government and you have come forward with this wording. And it's either a yes or a no at the end of the day. So for those of us who see this as a small first step, then we cannot say it's worthless, because it's not. This amendment recognises, and I think it's important to state it again, it says it recognises that the provision of care by members of a family to one another, by reason of the bonds that exist between them, gives to society a support without which the common good cannot be achieved, and shall strive to support this such provision. Now, I agree. Shall strive, look, it, it's debatable. Shall is strong. I know that because from European legislation, it, it was seen as a, as a strong word to use, because it does indicate an intent to do something. I shall means I intend to. Strive, again, it, 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 it involves not just making an effort, but, but making considerable effort, perhaps even big efforts. To, to do something, to achieve something. So, shall strive, in my view, carries weight. But 
The issue perhaps here today is that it doesn't imply an obligation and it doesn't imply a definitive legal commitment. And <coughs> I agree that it doesn't. But, and I think that's what family carers would like to have seen, a constitutional commitment to support and protect care and by extension, family carers who provide vast amounts of care. So Minister, what I think would help is that you, or the Taoiseach, your government, would give a commitment to use this proposed clause in the Constitution, if the people decide to pass it, to use this clause as a basis for delivering a meaningful package of support to carers in the next budget, and that you would commit to doing that. I agree with the Deputy McAuliffe, what he said earlier. He said there is unfinished work here. And you know something, citizens are very suspicious of unfinished work, and rightly so, because they recognise that unfinished work is very often left unfinished. And they don't want to see that, and they don't want to be part of it. So I think, Minister, there's a real burden on you and your government here. If you really want to show that this change means something, your government will need to show that it's meaningful. And you will need to commit to doing that in the next budget. And you will need to make that commitment before we vote in the upcoming referenda. One simple example might be, Minister, is the need to abolish the means test for carers' allowance. One family carer I know very well describes that as the mean test. Because you say again, and it's important to read what's in front of us, because that's what we vote on. We don't vote on any other ideas or thoughts. We only vote on what's in front of us. And, you know, you say in this proposed amendment that carers' contribution uh, gives to society a support without which the common good cannot be achieved. Now, that's a strong statement. But Minister, if the income of a carer's partner is what determines the allocation of carer's allowance, and it is, then this doesn't mean what's written here. So by saying that, and I'm going to read it one more time, because I think it's really important. By saying that the provision of care by members of a family to one another, by reason of the bonds that exist between them, gives to society a support without which the common good cannot be achieved. If that is to mean something, you need to give a signal to people that it will. Um, I believe this new amendment can be used as a basis to, add, to argue for proper supports for family carers. I want to see people coming out and voting yes. But in my experience of referenda, and I've been involved in a number, people need a reason to vote. And while the words here are not strong enough, they still imply um, a moral obligation on government to deliver. But like unfinished business, moral obligations often carry little weight. So that's why I'm saying, Minister, you need, your government needs to show that the words that you propose to be inserted into our constitution will mean something and that you and your government will be the people who will deliver on it.